Wait, you got into the world of theater and didn't expect to be around weirdos? <laughs> Hi friends. We have another patron pick today and it is Ed Wood. For the first time in what feels like a long time, I actually have a little bit of knowledge about this movie going into it. Back in the age of middle school and early high school, I had an overwhelming obsession with Tim Burton and everything he does. And it tracks, doesn't it? <laughs> like it makes sense. And anytime we had to write a paper for school about a figure that we liked, I would choose Tim Burton. Which means that I have at some point written about Ed Wood in passing, enough that I understand that it's like biographical pick about a real guy named Ed Wood who was a director and I'm pretty sure made like weird quirky films, like a D-list kind of director. which. Minus the D-list part, kind of sounds like Tim Burton was making his own memoir <laughs> by choosing somebody probably as quirky and bizarre as he is. And I know that Johnny Depp plays Ed Wood. Outside of that, it's all a blank space, baby. I guess my expectations are really that this is gonna feel like a Tim Burton movie. Quirky and charming and strange and wonderful. Let's get into it. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like Tim Burton. <laughs> Greetings, my friend. For the first time, we are bringing you the full story of what happened. The true story of Edward D. Wood Jr. <laughs> I love that very, like, creature feature intro. Casual Company. Written and directed by Edward D. Wood Jr. When does he shorten it to Ed Wood? Edward D. Wood Jr. is quite the mouthful. Bill Murray! It's 8.15. We can't hold the curtain any longer. Press night and there's no press! Oh no! Sarah Jessica Parker! The bird of peace, so that you may change your ways. A little heavy-handed. <laughs> oh, what does that old queen know? <laughs> Screw you, Miss Crowley. Really have a face like a horse? Oh my god, no! <laughs> Not leaning into actual commentary. <laughs> what if I just don't got it? Orson Welles was only 26 when he made Citizen Kane. I'm already 30. That's four years, it's not. And this is the time in your life when you're supposed to be struggling. <laughs> <laughs> the idea that like, you're supposed to struggle. <laughs> oh, depressingly accurate. <laughs> Gosh, where's my pink sweater? I never seem to find my clothes anymore. What are you getting dressed for, girly? Get off your ass! Get this over the executive building! Sure thing, mister. God, he's so happy and, like, unfazed. Good for him. I could never. <laughs> you said what to me? <laughs> Being sweet and nice and letting people walk all over you is probably not the way to get anywhere. You're a real camera. <laughs> Was that Lawrence of Arabia? <laughs> Why, if I had half the chance, I could make an entire movie using this stock footage. Is this where it comes from? Serious explosion. Nobody knows what's causing them, but it's upsetting all the buffalo. So the military are called in to solve the mystery. I love the enthusiasm and I love the creativity of it all. I, I heard about your new project and I was curious if you'd signed a director yet. If we could get together, I could explain to you why I'm more qualified to direct this than anyone else in town. Well, I'd rather not go into that over the phone. <laughs> I need to come up with the story first. <laughs> I'm Ed Wood. I'm here about directing the Christine Jorgensen picture. Is there a script? Fuck no. It opens in nine weeks <laughs> in Tulsa. You said you had some special qualifications? Did we come up with those on our way over? I hope so. I have never told anyone what I'm about to tell you. Because I just came up with it. I like to dress in women's clothing. You a fruit? No, not at all. I love women. Ed Wood Jr. So you think this qualifies you to make my movie? Yes, I know what it's like to live with a secret and worry about what people are going to think of you. Wait, 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 wait. Is he not lying? Because a second ago when Sarah Jessica Parker was in her closet and she was looking for a shirt and she was like, I keep losing all my clothes. Is it really because he's been wearing them? Like, it's fine. I just want to know if it's a lie or not. <laughs> <laughs> so while well, we have an obsession with women's clothes and dead people. <laughs> Constrictive. I can't even fold my arm. <laughs> 
Your selection is quite shoddy. You're wasting my time. So the ghost, I told you, I don't want any of your goddamn coffins. No, no, I don't work here. Not dead people, famous people. <laughs> big, big fan. I've seen all your movies. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you buying a coffin? I'm planning on dying soon. <laughs> You're much scarier in real life than you are in the movie. <laughs> Is that a compliment? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> don't want the classic horror films anymore. Today it's all giant box. The old ones were much spookier. They had castles. They were mythic. The women prefer the traditional monsters. He's not wrong. It both repels and attracts them. They have the agony of childbirth. The blood is horror. Well, I, I don't know how accurate that is. I do prefer castles and mythic monsters and poetry versus giant robots, but I don't know if it has anything to do with childbirth. <laughs> Get together again sometime, Mr. Lugosi. But now, the children of the night are calling me. <laughs> Spooky bastard. <laughs> do you have any idea how much money he made for this studio? Uh, eh? Well, now he's a junkie. He don't deserve to work. He's so great, you hire him. Yeah, well, I would if I could. I want whatever rose-tinted glasses this man has. There's something a little bizarre about watching your own movies, right? She gives me the willies. Oh, I hate it when she interrupts the picture. I think she's a honey. No. <laughs> You'll come under my spell. Gosh, Bella, how do you do that? You must be double-jointed. <laughs> You must be double jointed and weird, and like a weirdo who wants to put people under their spell. <laughs> I'm very tired. I need to take my medicine. God, he's not gonna just keel over in the kitchen, is he? Because it seems like it might just happen at any second. I don't like this. Why does this feel so ominous? It's great, though. It's a great shot. <laughs> I feel much better. Children! I love children! What's his medicine? Oh, he got called a junkie. Mmm, that makes more sense, because, like, Sweetheart didn't take no pill and get like this, you know what I mean? So, what was the important news you couldn't tell me on the phone? I started thinking about what you were saying, about how your movies need to make a profit. <laughs> Had you not heard that yet? <laughs> what if I told you you could have a star for $1,000? Lugosi? Yes! Isn't he dead? No, he's not dead. He lives in Baldwin Hills. I want a script in three days. We start shooting a week from Monday. How biographical is this? Did this stuff really happen? Or is it one of those, like, alternate universe biographies? Oh, I'll read it as soon as I get home. Why don't you go in the bedroom and take a look? Oh, wait. Oh, no pressure. No pressure for my feedback or anything, then. Is it a masterpiece or is it horrible? So this is real. So that's where my sweater's been. Oh, I love it. Jesus Christ, and you never told me? Well, this is my way of telling. I mean, this is our life, it's so embarrassing! God, how can you act so casual when you're dressed like that? I support you, Ed. <laughs> it's maybe not the best way to deliver the news. <laughs> what about this title? My poster says I changed my set. Trust me, you'll be better off. This story's gonna grab people. Shoot whatever baloney you want, just make sure it's seven reels long. I mean, at least he doesn't have too many hurdles yet. <laughs> also, did things go well with What's Her Bucket back home? Is she going to be part of the picture? Did she leave him? We're about to embark on hmm? quite a journey. All right, we'll talk about days three and four later. Let's get that first shot off. Oh, he writes stars and directs. Emphasis on stars. <laughs> Don't you want a second take for protection? What's to protect? It was perfect. Baby, be careful. Ghost is here. Everyone! 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 Come mm -hmm. on! Come in here. That didn't help at all. <laughs> I know Bella Lugosi's a world famous star and you're all very excited. Just treat him with respect. Everything will be all right. <laughs> Great to see you. Well, we got a big day planned for you. I can't tell if the group is excited to see Bella Lugosi or if they're just like, we don't really care about this. <laughs> Can we just get back to making the film? <gasps> oh, that makes me sad. You were great as Karloff's sidekick. Karloff? Fuck you! Oh, shh. That limey cocksucker can rot in hell for all I care! Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, you're gonna have a heart attack. Eric's talent to play Frankenstein, it's all grunting. I... What do you think you do? 
Beware of the big green dragon. Beware. Take care. Pull the string! Pull the string! Perfect. I feel like I've never watched a movie before or something. I feel like I am in the dimension that is called Clueless. Clueless? <laughs> like, what is that script? <laughs> Walk around like that in front of all these people. Ma'am, shut your mouth. You surrounded yourself with a bunch of weirdos. Oh. You're in the room too, bitch. Like, what, you got into the world of theater and didn't expect to be around weirdos? <laughs> Man, <Ma 'am. laughs> that's where the weirdos thrive. <laughs> Nobody in town has seen this picture, and I'm anxious to see it. Oh, I'm so nervous. I don't think this is going to go as well as he thinks it's going to. Why don't you leave your film cans with me? Maybe we can do some business together. Oh, no, they hate it. The Not the actual stock footage. What? Shut up. What the hell is this? Labels. This is an actual movie. Lock. <laughs> <laughs> but why this is probably another one of Billy Weldon's practical jokes. Everything. Oh, that's so sad. No, not after all this hard work and such like high hopes. Yo, schmuck, it ain't gonna play in L.A. Why not? I wish I hadn't blown every dime I ever made into making this stink bomb. I don't know who I'm more mad at, like Ed for for lying and putting himself in this position in the first place, or that fool for not having any evidence and being like, yeah, here's a bunch of money, make your movie, why not? And then getting mad about it. <laughs> I've got this new script, and there's a part that I believe you're ideal for. And at the end of the picture, he saves the girl. I like, when the movie shoot. <laughs> Like, I don't know if it's just because he's so charming or if it's because the people that he picks are so gullible, but he locks out. Bella? Oh, I love that shot. I love that a lot. No! Bella? What happened? Come on, let me get you to the hospital. No hospital. Yes, hospital. Is there anything I can get for you? Goulash. Goulash? I don't know how to make goulash. <laughs> I'm so broke. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, stop. I don't like this. There's something about trauma surrounding the elderly just like a stab to the heart every single time. Well, maybe you're not studio kind of material. Raise the money yourself. There we go. Order shares available at $15,000 each. Bella Lugosi. Still a lot. <laughs> I love that that's a running joke in the movie. That's good. Friday night? Well, gee, I suppose so. This casket uh, in cup. What did they expect on Gary to pronounce this dialogue? Oh, this is gonna go south so fast. Ah, oh, the guy from the casket. Men will have colonized Mars. Ain't that something? It's a thought. I like that studio audience shot a lot too. Just like the tops of heads. Greetings! I am the cow. What a kooky place to sleep. Kind of reminds me of my house. This place got a Murphy bed, this place got a Murphy shower. <gasps> is he off script? <clears throat> Baby, Bella's not made for improv. Oh, I don't like it's hurting. It's giving me so much secondhand embarrassment. I can't, I can't be, be here. Bob is what he is. Told him we should have got Carlo. Oh. I predict your next project will be an outstanding success. No, Edward, you cannot take that seriously. How'd you know we'd be living on Mars by 1970? I guessed. Eddie, there's no such thing as a psychic. Well, at least he's honest. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's all about razzle dazzle. I love the like juxtaposition of this guy saying all this shit and Bella just sitting there, you know, in his like old school ways. And Ed Wood in the middle. Predict Pride of the Atom will be the biggest moneymaker of all time. Now, how much will this picture cost? In a normal studio, it'd be about a million bucks. We're more efficient, so we could bring it in at about 70 grand. Well, I shall certainly consider it. Look at them lying and swimming. Wendelin these people. I support it. Get your movie made. It didn't make a nickel. Oh, never mind that, I guess. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but all I have is a 50. Thank you. Don't you go stealing. Ed, you're going down a dark path, my man. You just moved here? Yes. I'm Loretta King. Edward D. Wood Jr. You know, I work in Hollywood. I'm a producer. Really? Don't you tell me right now that there's going to be another starlet and he's going to be a cheater. Well, maybe I can help you out. Have you ever thought about investing in a motion picture? Please. How much do your motion pictures cost? I think it would be about $60,000. That's all? It's because he's making it up. Five minutes ago, it was 70000 <laughs> There's a couple of parts I can think of right now. The secretary in the newspaper office, the file clerk. Here's one that looks good. 
Janet Lawton. Don't you dare, don't you dare give her part away. Can't you just see me in the part? I'm... <laughs> you best. Do it, girl. Do it. We're supposed to say no. Mm -hmm. That would have been the appropriate thing to say. Any of other parts. The secretary. <laughs> the secretary? The oh. file clerk? No, she's got a frying pan, bitch. Don't say those words. <laughs> no sympathy, sorry. You're Dr. Eric Vornall, and you're upset. No, no, you're not that upset. Ah, beautiful, print it. Beautiful? It was all full of mistakes. I don't understand. I don't understand the theory. It's just like he has the idea, but he did, it almost feels like he doesn't enjoy the process. Because <laughs> there's no critical thinking happening. Worked very hard helping Dr. Vornoff with- No, no, you're not that upset. Got to get through that door. Don't you dare. And cut. Perfect. Print it. Let's move on. Fundamentally, I feel upset about it. <laughs> Your check bounced. I'm fine. I'll get you the money later. I no, I need to now. What? I love that he uses the megaphone that does not do anything to megafy his voice. <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? I already gave you my 300. And now I need the other 60,000. What other 60,000? No. I gave you everything I have in the world. It's so messy. It's so messy. <laughs> Bella Lugosi will portray Dr. Eric Vornoff. <laughs> yeah, that'll sell it. Roll his vampire play. Vampira? He's standing right over there. <gasps> Pardon me, Miss Vampira? Yes. He's not gonna offer her the role of Janet, is he? I don't want you to show the movie. I want you to be in it. <sighs> Look, I'm with some friends and we're about to eat. I love her. <laughs> I don't need to blow some dentist for a part. Forget it. <sighs> Let's go. Oh, I like her even more for being like, bitch, I'm worth more than that. <laughs> How can I make you happy? I got a son. A little slow, but a good boy. And you want him in the movie? Something tells me he'd make a hell of a leading man. It's so messy. It is so messy. And like I said at the beginning, you gotta have at least an iota of a backbone. In an industry like this, you can't be a yes man. You can't say yes to everything and everyone. Take the chair. Oh, don't be silly. Let Harry finish. You still need some more work. Good girl. <laughs> Why don't we talk about the scene? Janet Lawton has just discovered that Dr. Vornoff bought the old Willis estate. True. Eddie, what's my motivation? I have five days to complete this picture. Don't get goofy on me. You don't be an asshole. Janet, still on the monster hunt? I can't hear you. I said you I know what you said. I get it. See you later. Oh, that is nasty to let those two act out that scene. No, no fix. Fix is a word, <laughs> I guess. It's beautiful. You're stealing that? Don't kill the wrestler. Oh, Christ. It's like the Phantom of the Opera. <gasps> we killed him. <laughs> Better than wrestling. Well, <laughs> Connie, the octopus has to live in a lake. This is kind of a stream. This is kind of a stream. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can handle a night shoot. Nonsense, you look great. How dare you? He is slowly becoming more and more corrupt, isn't he? Like more and more self-serving and less and less the optimistic boy that we knew from the beginning. How do you turn this on? Somebody misplaced the octopus motor. Shake his legs around. Looks like he's killing you. Ah! Ah! I mean, he's doing a pretty good job for what he's got to work with. A plus plus. I want to thank you again for last night. Great man like yourself shouldn't have to be wandering through the muck at 4 a.m. Yeah, you better remember who you used to be and remember what these people are doing for you. Wrote something special for you. A new final speech. Is it good? Please tell me it's good. These lights. I have no problem remembering. Aww. I have no home. Despised. Hmm. <laughs> The jungle is my home. I love the drama. I shall perfect my own race of people. A race of atomic supermen. Okay, we were doing well and then we kind of fell off the cliff. I don't know. I don't know about that. That's a wrap. Of course it's perfect for Ed. <laughs> oh. This is nice. Has Ed like finally found his his group? 
Well, minus his girlfriend, I guess. Nobody cares! These movies are terrible! That was... harsh. <laughs> it's over. I need a normal life. You know, I support her wanting to follow her own desires, and I hope that Ed can be happier now. <laughs> No, dummy, I didn't say good. Oh, well, it looks like we're kind of living in shambles, so maybe not. Hello? Vampira? Ed Wood here. Uh, uh, listen, I was wondering if you'd like to go out sometime, grab some dinner, maybe. Look, you seem like a nice guy, Ed, but you're just not my type. Remember earlier when he was watching the show with Bella and he said, I hate it when she interrupts the movies. <laughs> Help me. Bella? Bella, not again. This shit's just depressing, because it's like, you can't keep being in the same cycle and like ed showing up to help is help to an extent we need more help than that and it can't be ed's responsibility either <gasps> what what are you doing though i'm going to kill myself oh <gasps> they're canceling my unemployment now that i can't pay the rent they have nothing to live for that's not true. Please, Please don't. don't. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Oh shit, come with me. We'll be at peace in the afterlife. You don't have to worry about finding work. Give me the gun. I'll make you a drink. Yeah, yeah, play along. Play along until you get the gun. That's fine. That's fine. Eddie, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, I love the lighting of this, the underneath, because it feels like all of the movies that they kind of reference, like obviously Dracula, but then like Frankenstein, Jekyll and Hyde, because it looks so transformative, that lighting, right? It looks very monstrous. And to go from, I'm going to off myself to please help me, like it's a monster movie within itself, right? It's good. I love it. <laughs> This is, this is for the best. Okay, I didn't know it was gonna be so nasty and- No, let him out. Let him out. I don't like it anymore. I don't- oh. Is that Angora? Mm, yes. <gasps> My queen, I'm so obsessed with this woman. I love her. It is awfully expensive. She's perfection. I'm a director, writer, actor. Has been in a wash up and a nobody. <laughs> what you making? Booties for my father. Has he been here long? This is my 13th pair. So yes. <laughs> I'm with Mr. Lagosi. How is he? Well, there's a lot of junk in his system for such an old man. Is he going to be okay? We'll do our best. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. That's horrible. I can't get into how much I hate the system of care for the elderly and because it is still just as shitty as this, honestly. I can't get into that hole because I will never climb back out by before the end of this movie. He loves the fame. Look at him. He's like, they like me again. <laughs> I think you chased them. <laughs> Those people are parasites. They just want to exploit you. Fine. Okay, Pot Kettle Black. Okay. First celebrity ever to check into a rehab. <laughs> You're gonna start a trend, babe. <laughs> Hello again. Hi. I made him some booties to cheer him up. Oh, of course she did. Because she's perfect. Marry her. <laughs> no, I'm from back east. Poughkeepsie. All American small town. Everybody knows everybody. Did you find it boring? No, not at all. I used to listen to the radio dramas constantly. I love those shows. And this is the kind of shit that like makes him so endearing. You know, me and my dad. March down the street in our uniform to the little movie theater. Oh, that kind of made me feel really emotional. I don't what the fuck. <laughs> That's the Edward that I like. Get rid of the hustle, get rid of the using people. Be your little weird misfit self. The lighting of this movie is something else. I'm about to tell you something that I never told any girl on a first date. I wear, I wear women's, women's clothing. clothing. I like to wear women's clothes. <laughs> Perfect, get it out of the way. And if she's into it, she'll stick around, you know? And I can't believe I'm telling you this, but I really like you and I don't want it getting in the way. You don't like sex with girls? No, I love sex with girls. There's really no issues here. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I told you, she's perfect. <laughs> See, we thought that Mr. Lugosi was insured through his union. They say that his eligibility ran out years ago. You can't pull him out. I have a few hundred dollars. That won't even begin to cover it. I hate that. I've got some great news. The doctor says you're all better and... I don't feel so great. Well, you look just peachy. 
there's something very, very sweet about him lying to Bella. Because telling him the truth and being like, you don't have insurance and you don't have money to pay for this. Uh, which means there's no hope for you, quite honestly. Like, you can't tell him that. Don't worry, we're almost there. <laughs> there's nobody there. Hi. But hey, we're on a theater. We're on the marquee. Come on, this way. Please be a full house. Please be a full house. <laughs> Monsters! What is happening? Let's just cross our fingers. Let's just cross our fingers, okay? <laughs> oh my. We just can't have anything good, can we? <laughs> <laughs> Look at them all crammed in there. <laughs> That was a premiere. <laughs> I love our little group of misfits and weirdos. These last few days have been a good time. Oh, stop. I don't want to cry. I just wish you could have seen the movie. Uh, I know it by heart. <laughs> the jungle is my home. I've got that bird! <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Well, you're just as great as you ever were. I love that this movie is like equal parts about Ed Wood's life and also Bella's, which I wouldn't have expected, <laughs> but I'm obsessed with it. I love, please don't, he's not dead, is he? Shut up. I can't, I'm gonna have to turn it off. I can't do this. Mother of Mary. I was just so happy like two seconds ago. <laughs> Which is sign of a good movie making practice, honestly. You, you build up to the high and then you crash and burn. I hope his casket's big enough for him to be comfy. I love that. Edward, have you finally made something meaningful? <laughs> uh, Mr. Wood, you have bounced your third and final rent check. Come on in, I'll write you another check. Oh, does he have Bella's dogs? Oh. <laughs> I'm interested in the picture business. We wish to produce a series of uplifting religious films. Mm, not our shtick, not our shtick. Sorry, sir. Bye. <laughs> Church has enough money for one film. We just don't have enough for all the Oh, well. Ed, take their money. I don't care. Grave robbers from outer space. If you make this picture, you'll have enough money to finance a hundred religious films. Well, I understand this science fiction is very popular. It doesn't quite fit my religion. <laughs> well, we have a big star. Bella Lugosi. I thought he passed on. Oh no, it's finally true. <laughs> no. I've got the last footage he ever shot. I'll just get a double to finish his scenes and we'll release it as Bella Lugosi's final film. Scam people, baby. Oh my, Eddie. <gasps> Why? She was fired? Hire her. The girl needs work. We'll be portraying the ghoul's wife. And I love her too. She's such a bad bitch. Look at how fabulous she is. What if I don't have any lines? I'll play the part mute. Dr. Tom, hi Ed. It's my chiropractor. Hey Kathy, how are you? Doctors have money. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he gonna be the Bella? <gasps> ah. It's uncanny. <laughs> it At least he's lucky, you know? I feel like that's how he's gotten into kind of everything that's ever happened to him. It's just pure luck. Cover your face with this. No, now I can see it. <laughs> Welcome to the fold, brother. Y'all are gonna shit bricks when you see their movie. I don't think it quite fits your general aesthetic and expectations. <laughs> Crypt contains numerous references to grave robbing. Well, they're the grave robbers from outer space. Yes, about that title. It strikes us as very inflammatory. You can't wait until you baptize everybody to bring this shit up. Monsters, graves, bodies. You blind saucer. <laughs> And cut. That was perfect. Perfect. Uh, Every first shot is perfect, don't you know? This is our choir director. He's gonna play the young hero. Are you people insane? I make the casting decisions around here. Honestly, it should be a group. You know what? I love Edge Stick. I love his weirdness. I love his crazy batshit kind of movie productions. And I want him to be able to keep that. However, it would be smart if his goal is to make blockbuster films to like work as a group. So when people go, that headstone tipped over, maybe we should reshoot. He'd have to listen. You know what I mean? Oh, the Baptists aren't going to like this. What do you think you're doing? Get up immediately. Shame of the Lord. I can't take it! <laughs> Imperial whiskey. Is there a big shot in the corner? Well, I'm a young filmmaker and a real big fan. I 
My pleasure. I'm Orson Welles. Oh, that voice, huh? <laughs> is it all worth it? It is when it works. You know, the one film of mine where I had total control, Kane, studio hated it. But they didn't get to touch a frame. Is that true? Because if that's true, that's batshit crazy considering Citizen Kane is like one of the most highly regarded films of all time. Is that true? We are going to finish this picture just the way I want it. <gasps> He's not a yes man anymore. Yes, bitch. Go. Let's finish this picture. Get up and cheer. We're having a moment. <laughs> They're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I want that lightning, I want those two explosions, and I've got to have more shots of the military. An absolute nightmare, but I'm so happy for him. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. I love it. I love it so much. Ah, print it. <laughs> oh my god, not the movie turning into the exact, like, shtick that is Ed Wood's filmmaking. Genius. That's a wrap. Plan 9 from Outer Space. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we should all give a hand. Hey, take them all! Why did that shot of him on the stage look so familiar? Was that a Citizen Kane shot? It's been years since I've seen Citizen Kane. He did it, y'all. They're gonna hate it, though, aren't they? That this film is for Bella. Oh, I fucking love that shot so much. Not the intro being the same as the intro to this movie. Oh, look at our little group. The grief of his wife's death. <laughs> this is the one I'll be remembered for. Oh, jeez, honey, I'm so happy for you. Let's get going. Oh, that idiot's pouring us. probably stop by the time we get to the desert. The optimism. He just never lost it. I love that. <laughs> Did the people like the movie? It doesn't even matter. You know what? It doesn't matter. Because even if they hated it, he would still find a million and one good things to say. Edward D. Wood Jr. kept struggling in Hollywood, but mainstream success eluded him. He died in 1978 at the age of 54. Two years later, Ed was voted worst director of all time, bringing him worldwide acclaim and a new generation of fans. Kathy Wood was married to Ed for over 20 years, loyal throughout many ups and downs. After his death, she never remarried. I told you she's perfection. <laughs> Bella Lugosi never rose from the grave, but after appearing in 103 films, he is more famous than ever. Today, his movie memorabilia outsells Boris Karloff's by a substantial margin. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> I do want to read some more about like how historically accurate everything is it seems based off of the like credit reels happening at the end it seems like it's pretty faithful to reality there's something very charming about the idea that his fan base is misfits and weirdos because his movies made by and for misfits and weirdos there's something kind of perfect in that there were so many beautiful shots. I love a black and white movie, but I love a heavily stylized black and white movie so much. Some of those shots are just so perfect. I loved the scene when he was outside Bella's door and there was the lamp, but him and the door were just black shadow. I loved the shot of Bella in the like panel window of the rehab clinic, like screaming in bed. It's so interesting and so fun that this movie is about somebody who was not respected by the bigwigs of Hollywood and arguably who did not understand the subtleties and intricacies of angles and lighting and filming and, and all of those little nuances of making a movie, yet the movie about him very much falls into those things. I feel like Ed's obsession with the kind of older monster movies, and then Tim Burton's own obsession with the very similar genre, like the Vincent Price movies. Like, that's so hand in hand. <laughs> so funny to kind of see Tim Burton almost making a movie about himself. And there's like kind of this charm to this movie that feels very like a love letter to Ed Wood's career, to the people in his life, to the other people that were adjacent to him in their own careers, and the kind of fabulous 
bizarre eccentricities of all of these people. The movie highlighted a lot of these like characteristics of these people, but it was never like exploiting those qualities or like demonizing them. It's so easy to see why anybody who feels a little bit odd or a little bit weird or a little bit misfitty would enjoy Edward's body of work slash enjoy this movie and understand the appreciation. 